This video is brought to you by ExxonMobil Aviation Lubricants. Hi, I'm Vern Rayburn, President and CEO of Eclipse Aviation, and we're here at AirVenture 2007 in Oshkosh, and we're going to talk about some of the things that are happening in the Eclipse 500 program. I'd like to start talking about the performance improvements that we've made to the aircraft that are delivering on the the guarantees and the promises we made to our customers. And we've done a lot of things to the aircraft to reduce drag and increase range, and I just want to show you a few of those right now. We'll start over here with the uh, tip tank. And you'll notice if, if you're an Eclipse 500 aficionado that we do have a larger tip tank now. It's fundamentally two inches larger in diameter and about four inches in circumference. And what you see is also it's about 16 inches longer than what it originally was. What that does is just gives us more fuel capacity. So what we really have now is about an additional 12 gallons of fuel capacity per tip tank, 24 for the aircraft which just gives the airplane obviously more range. And if we go around here, I'll show you some of the other aerodynamic refinements. The biggest one of the biggest refinements is up here on the tail. Uh, we've changed the what we call the bullet fairing and it's really the, the vertical horizontal interface fairing. We discovered that we had a lot of drag and, and from that because we had a lot of flow separation, which was creating a lot of burble, a lot of turbulence up there. And that was causing a lot of our drag combined with we had had to do some things that were very draggy from a stability standpoint to improve the control effectiveness. Once we discovered all that, we were able to change that, get rid of the drag that we'd put on the control surfaces and get rid of the drag from the flow separation. And that was a big, big win for us. And in addition, we've done other things like uh, improve the gap seal on the rudder. Uh, we've changed the skins on the pylon for the engine mount, which got rid of some vibration and got rid of some flow from high pressure air underneath the uh, pylon up to the top of the pylon. We've changed the gap seals on the ailerons, and we've added a fairing on the uh, main gear landing gear, excuse me, main landing gear wheel well. Uh, very similar to what you see on a 737 on, on a lot of the citations. And again, these are all just sort of classic aerodynamic cleanups. Uh, there's a lot that we could have done and quite literally this is a never ever ending process. It would take us years and years to go through every single change that we could do. But what we did do is try to understand what were the largest contributors to drag or could be the largest eliminators of drag did a Prado study on that and said in essence here's the things we're going to do and it added up to about 18 distinct separate things that we've done to the airframe which gets the speed up to the 370 knots and the range up to the 1150 nautical miles with NBAA IFR reserves. Okay well we're sitting in uh, our latest production aircraft serial number 38 and we're going to talk a little bit about what's happening with Avio NG which is our our replacement and upgraded system for Avio. The first and most important point to understand is Avio is not just these displays here. A lot of people mistake Avio for just the radios and the displays, but what Avio really refers to is the entire airframe. This is the first truly all electric airplane. And everything in this airplane from fuel gauging to the trim system to the engines to the landing gear to the actuators to even the reading lights here in the cabin are controlled by computer. The cost and the effort to upgrade their airplane is going to be extraordinarily minimal with the first production aircraft being in late October for NG. Of the, of the challenges we've had, specifically uh, the AD that the FA issued in late June for the PDOT AOA system, We've now come up with a fix for that. It's been certified. The FAA has approved an AMOC, an alternate means of compliance. We have service bulletin written, and we have parts and inventory, and we're modifying the aircraft. In terms of the cracking that we had on windshields, need, people need to understand this was a crack driven by fatigue. So we start seeing this late in the test program with the test fleet. In fact, we do have a new design. Fundamentally, we solved the problem by increasing the number of load-bearing holes in the windshield. We expect to have that certified uh, probably within the week, and we'll start retrofitting the fleet, and that significantly increases the inspection cycles. And we will be opening an online auction. We're actually using eBay to do this, and it's a custom site that eBay's built for us. And we'll start the auction uh, at, uh, I think, 11 a.m. July 30th. And this aircraft will sell through that auction process. Uh, that process concludes on August 10th, if I remember correctly. And at that point, 
whoever wins that bidding comes to Albuquerque and they get this airplane. It's done, it's finished, it's it's totally equipped with virtually every option that we have. Uh, and so it's going to be very interesting to see what the marketplace wants to say about what the airplane's worth. And so, uh, But if you want an Eclipse 500 and you want it now, this is your airplane.